you this afternoon um, some experiences on using a method called human-centered design uh, and how this can be applied to the broad concept of One Health. And I'm using a case study of the reimagined Ebola treatment tent. I'm representing a much wider team at Resilient Africa Network and beyond within uh, the university um, that has been part uh, of this uh, uh, interesting project. Uh, by way of background, the rising challenge of uh, emerging pandemic threats, and uh, but not only that, but also the displacement, human displacement, due to conflict, due to the increasing natural and technological uh, disasters, uh, raises new challenges that we did not imagine before, uh, especially to emergency service delivery in the hot and humid climatic conditions. And taking the example of Ebola in West Africa, uh, West Africa, they had to set up many Ebola treatment units to an unprecedented scale, very rapidly in rural areas uh, in West Africa. The heat and the stress and the humidity comes not only from the uh, personal protective equipment. We all know that they put on this dense gear, but the heat also comes from the ambient environment, the type of shelter in which they are. So this, um, uh, as a case study, necessitates cross-disciplinary innovation in One Health, beyond even uh, public health and uh, uh, veterinary and other stakeholders going into engineering and architecture and many other anthropological aspects of uh, well-being. So the USID, responding to some of these challenges, set up what they call the Fight Ebola Grand Challenge. And this grand challenge set out to address three development challenges. First, looking for new forms of personal protective equipment that address heat stress for, uh, for health workers. The new appro approaches to improving the care environment. How do we make the care environment more humane? And then three, new tools and diagnostics to improve care. Um, 1,500 ideas were pitched to that challenge. And I'm glad to tell you that uh, uh, the Resilient African Network's idea, which was called the Huca Tent, was one of these 15 ideas that emerged out of 1,500. And Huca stands for uh, Humane Emergency Use Canopies and Accessories. Now, the tent is the main step of rapidly deployable structures for humanitarian service delivery. Almost everywhere, whether it's not only Ebola, but also uh, um, uh, refugees, internally displaced persons, uh, different kinds of emergency settings. The first thing that you think of is the tent. And this will remain so for many years. You can see the impression of uh, the Ebola treatment unit at Mulago here in Kampala. Uh, that is the artist's impression. But then you can see also the actual uh, treatment unit um, that was established um, at Mulago there. And then you can see one of the largest camps in Edore, in Kenya. You can see that tents are the mainstay. Unfortunately, the traditional tent has hardly been reimagined for the last 50 years. It has remained fairly static, with not too much space uh, for reimagining within uh, the stakeholders who manufacture these tents. So you can see the World Food Program is using this. And these things were mainly meant for stockpiling of inanimate objects, not for operation of people, because people need to breathe. But the things are like this, like they are big, um, uh, big uh, enclosed spaces. Now, they, and you can see they were mainly for stockpiling, but the private sector, which is always smarter than the public sector, has already ingeniously tried to change them. They've ripped off a, an entire wall, and they've put some windows and now they are being used for big ceremonies. Unfortunately, for the Ebola treatment unit, you cannot set up something like this because it's a containment zone. So you cannot rip off a wall. So you have to keep it enclosed. Now, this problem with this system is that these windows are useless. They are only for bringing in light uh, and also to, uh, for someone to see outside. But there is no ventilation system. So this place becomes like a black body here, which is trapping heat and causing extreme discomfort. And you imagine for someone who is also putting on like this uh, space suit, and then they are in this black body, 
it can be very terrible, and some health workers end up getting heat stress. So what methods did we use as RAN? We put together a multidisciplinary team. This team has engineers, architects, social scientists, nurses who work in this actual ETUs. And we used uh, RAN's methodology for innovating. It's a four-step process called human-centered design. And human-centered design is a four-step process. Very important is that you have to first understand the user experience. You don't just don't understand what the user is according to that. Actually, this is the most important step in human-centered design. When we consulted the people anthropologically, what did they tell us? They told us that if the, for emergency service delivery units that cannot afford air conditioning are awfully hot. It's almost like um, a burner inside there. They are very hot and intolerable. Two, they told us, some of the nurses and what told us, that patients are perceived as hidden, hidden in some hole, some mysterious hole somewhere, and this exacerbates stigma. Everybody, you know how Africans we associate mystery with the strange things. So everybody who enters those tents, they are closed off and people are wondering what is happening in there. But also the people are extremely bored. They told us that the patients have to stay there for several days, almost like 40 days. They are extremely, extremely bored. Then duplication of accessories. You get a tent like this, you bring in a drip stand and put it there. But a drip, a drip is, is held by a very tiny hook. So why not fix it onto the tent? Uh, and then diagnostics. Uh, one of the interesting things is that health workers in some of these ETUs, most, of, most ETUs, have to memorize patient information. They come, they take the BP, they take the temperature, they take some other measurements and they put them in the head because they are not allowed to carry out anything from the ETU. So you imagine you have 40 patients on the ward. How on earth will you memorize their condition? And then you run back and write when you go to the staff room. And then uh, it's much about the ambient environment as it is about uh, PPE. And this is uh, the tent that we are talking about, closed off. And this idea came from the engineers who told us that the normal houses have, uh, the system works both windows and ventilators for you to create that natural flow. If you put windows on a tent without ventilators, nothing will happen. And those of you who are with us at lunch, you felt it very well within the tent, which was open, but extremely hot. So the hot air gets trapped in there. So we create this vent. And that is the design modification. So we create vents, breathable walls, and also the canopy height. The height from here to here also has an implication. So these are the prototypes we've come out with, uh, different variations. But you can see the key thing is the vent up. And also we rip off this uh, tarpaulin and make this thing enmeshed and open. Uh, uh, of course, the challenge is precipitation. But when it rains, you roll down the flaps. And also the mesh, uh, we would like to design it in a way that someone inside can easily see outside, but not easy for someone outside to see what is inside. Those are now design specifications. Uh, but these are the three prototypes that we came out with. Uh, but also, we'd like to think of smart accessorization with the fittings that reduce duplication when setting up this tent. Things like hooks and clamps. But we need to first understand what is the job that people who use these uh, canopies uh, work in there, and what do they need? So we rip off these drip stands and get these hooks onto these struts and, and uh, trusses, or the beams. Uh, and I, we think the tent structure is rigid enough to support those simple things, including worktops. We're even thinking of putting clamps uh, for a large screen here, so that patients can watch uh, TV where they, it's possible so that uh, you can reduce uh, the boredom. But all these things embedded so that when you are setting up the ETU, it takes you a short time uh, integrated. Uh, and in the future, the vision is to create portable hospital systems. Like you create a hospital in a box, uh, someone carries it, three hospitals made of a tent with different accessories, and they set them up somewhere very rapidly. Uh, we just have to imagine what, are the, what is the package of things that we can put inside here uh, to make this uh, a standalone unit. 
Uh, we've done, we have started experiments. We've set up an experiment, the three designs that I talked to you about, they are in the field now, and we are uh, putting sensors, temperature sensors and humidity sensors to assess. And our design target is a minimum of five degrees centigrade reduction in average ambient temperatures that is unassisted uh, by artificial ventilation. But also we would like to assess to what extent it, ex uh, it reduces social exclusion for users so that they are not captured in some cavity somewhere where they are not seen. But in the meantime, we've done preliminary computer modeling, uh, purely using computer models, and they are showing that even without putting any windows or vents, just the design change with uh, the canopy that I told you about on top, this section here that increases the overall height, results in a two degrees centigrade average reduction uh, in ambient temperature within this structure. So we are very optimistic that if we include the, 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 the windows uh, and the, 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 the vent at the top, we shall achieve at least five degrees reduction in average temperatures, which in Sierra Leone, uh, uh, the room temperature there uh, for an open room is about 26 degrees centigrade. But with these heat traps of tents, it can go to as high as 40 degrees centigrade. So if we do a five degree reduction, we think we shall be contributing uh, as, uh, significantly. So that is how uh, human-centered design has been applied uh, to this particular case study.